Hello, welcome to another empowering episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. I am your podcast host, Dominique Soxa. It is so good to have you today. We have an incredible guest joining us. Her name is Dr. Dawn Hamby. She wears a lot of hats and she wears them with pride. She's a military mom, a dog mom, business owner, and author. But what makes her truly exceptional is her journey from being a teacher to a double doctorate holder on a mission to help others with passion and purpose in their career careers, and their lives. She took an early retirement after 31 years in the workplace to pursue a dream of essentially writing a career book for women. Here it is. Today, she is dedicated to helping organizations uncover the potential of their workforce while sharing the invaluable lessons that she learned in hiring and firing over the past 30 years. She wants women to actually know that career change does not have to be scary, not at all, but can instead be an exciting new chapter. Please join us in this episode as we dive into Dawn's journey, her insights on career and life, and how she's helping women flourish over 50. Hey there, fellow BritBox enthusiasts. If you've been following along, you know how much I rave about BritBox, my go-to streaming paradise for the finest in British television content. From exclusive mysteries to crime dramas, comedies, and documentaries, boy, BritBox has it all. Sign up for BritBox today and indulge in Archie and other fan favorites from any device. As a special treat for my U.S. and Canadian listeners, I've secured a limited time offer. Get a whopping 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But here's the catch. You only snag this deal by heading to BritBox.com and using my exclusive promo code over 50 at checkout. That's simple. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to explore the captivating world of Archie and of course, other incredible shows on BritBox. Seize the moment and get 50% off your first month. Use promo code over 50 at BritBox.com. Happy streaming. As the holiday season approaches, we find ourselves in the pursuit of that perfect gift, but one that encapsulates the essence of our relationships and creates lasting memories. Well, today I'm excited to share with you a truly unique and heartfelt present. I am talking about StoryWorth. Okay, so here's how it works. Every week, StoryWorth emails a thought-provoking question of your choice to either your relative or friend from their vast pool of possible options. These questions are not your run-of-the-mill inquiries. They're actually designed to spark profound and heartfelt responses. Questions like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? Or if you could see into the future, what would you want to find out? That's just to name a couple. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love the most a thoughtful, personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come. Just go to storyworth.com over 50 and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com over 50 to save $10 on your first purchase. Hey there, coffee enthusiasts. If you're anything like me, you do appreciate a cup of coffee that's not just a caffeine fix, but actually an experience, rich in flavor, quality, and convenience. But let's face it, settling for burnt, messy, or mediocre coffee, that can be a major morning disappointment. Sure, the $7 drive through option might seem tempting, but the expense, the possible burnt taste, and those never-ending lines, it's not so inviting. That's where Cometeer comes in. And trust me, it is a game changer for us coffee lovers, especially those of us over 50 and flourishing, right? Hey, join the future of coffee with Cometeer's perfectly brewed coffee, ready in seconds at home or on the go. Go to cometeer.com over 50 to purchase a 16 cup starter pack and get a free travel mug when you sign up. That's a free travel mug right here when you sign up at cometer.com slash over 50. Dawn, I'm so glad that you're with me this week. How exciting that you drove all the way in with your daughter. That is so awesome. <laughs> Road trips are fun, aren't they? They certainly are. Yeah. Yes. You know, my first question to every guest is, how do you plan on flourishing this week? But it sounds like you already are. <laughs> I know we try. And I love the fact that the podcast has the word flourishing in it. Now, mm -hmm. as a former teacher, can I tell you this? Yes. The word flourish dates back to the 1300s. It's got Latin and French roots because it comes from the word floris, 
which of course is flower. Yes. So I love that your podcast is using that word and you ask that question mm. because as women in our fifties, I think we are at this beautiful stage where we are blossoming like flowers and we're reinventing ourselves and kind of reimagining our future. So for me, being a guest on your show, I think is the way I'm flourishing because I'm here as a result of doing something I tell clients to do all the time. Mm -hmm. That is that you're responsible for effort, not the outcome. Right. So I was inspired by a video of yours. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm called to just make a comment. And it was one of those moments where oftentimes we're sitting there thinking, oh, I really should do that. Or I need to do that. Oh, I think this is so great. I need to give her a compliment or whatever the case may be. And we don't do it. Yes. I did that. And as a result, you realize we had some major things in common and I had a story to share. And here I am today getting a chance to meet the beautiful podcast oh. host. <laughs> On. <laughs> that you are. But that's how I'm flourishing. I'm going to remember moments like this uh, and that you never know what adventure you're going to have unless you take a risk, make the effort. So absolutely. I'm going to continue to do that this week. I love that. You know, I talk about bold risk taking yes. all the time. Yeah. And I think that's what leads to God's blessings in our lives that we have to act on the seed planted, but we can't yeah. just sit there right. with the seed and now getting back to the flower again and flourishing, <laughs> right. which I love and probably explains why I'm so drawn to flowers. <laughs> Right, there you go. <laughs> you put it all together for me. <laughs> That's so great. Well, I'm thrilled that you're here. Um, again, we have so much in common. There's a right. lot of connectivity right. here. And you've written a book, and it is The Career Woman's Secret Playbook. And you've got some major, major insider strategies. And as I was reading your book, I loved how right in the beginning, you were just giving total props to your, and I'm going to quote you, badass daughter and your stepdaughter. Tell yes. me tell me about that because I love getting to know people right. and, and the women in women's lives. And Thank your you. daughters are women. Right. Thank you for that question. Uh, yeah, I thought it was important, especially a book written for women, mm -hmm. especially if you're lucky enough to be a mom, which yeah. I see as a true blessing and a true miracle. So I couldn't imagine even typing one word without honoring the daughters that I have. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I are a great example of a blended family. I gave birth to, as you said, a badass daughter. And I say that because she is living proof I gave birth to a badass because she's in the Air Force serving her country. And even in today's modern age, mm -hmm. where more women are in the military, when I say I'm a military mom, oftentimes they still think it's a son. So I'm always proud to say, actually, it's my daughter. And she has a pretty amazing job. She loads bombs on the F-16 fighter jet, now the F-35, which is like the top gun plane. So if that's not proof right there. I'm sorry, that, that is the pure definition of badass. I mean, And I'm looking hello. at her right now and she totally is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just so proud of that because it was important to me to be a role model for her and uh, for her to grow up knowing that being a strong and independent woman is so, so beautiful and mm. really necessary. And then I got blessed with my bonus daughter, yeah. my stepdaughter. And because of her life's work, she's a therapist. Mm. I'm so proud of what she does because she plays such an important part in, in helping her patients with mental health. Yeah. So I have this beautiful stepdaughter and my beautiful Air Force daughter. And it's just a really great example of, again, that risk taking. Had I not put myself out there and believe mm -hmm. that you're never too old for love, I never would have found my husband at the age of 49 after being a single mom for almost 14 years. Oh, I love that. Something tells me we're going to have to do a deep dive into that. <laughs> you know, the whole focus uh, right. really of this podcast is yes. about career strategies, right. Right? right? But the one thing that you mentioned in the beginning of the book is the support system. Yes. And you really, really rooted deep in family, mm -hmm. friendships, yes. and the support of right. a spouse yes. when trying to embark in a career. Mm -hmm. You know, elaborate on that because sure. you really, it's it's hard enough as it is mm -hmm. to get out there and act on a passion that's been placed in your heart, right. but right. not having the support around mm -hmm. you to do mm -hmm. that 
I can see is excruciating. It really is because it makes you doubt yourself, doesn't it? Yes. Especially if you were blessed to have, say, a great relationship with your dad, who's your first male role model. Mm -hmm. So I give thanks to the men in my life who, in my opinion, are strong enough in their own sense of self to believe that supporting, whether it's emotionally, financially, whatever it is, the women in their life in the best possible way is is just important and necessary. And they're not threatened by that. Mm -hmm. So I had great role models in my father, who's now 80 years old, in, in terms of supporting that and believing that. And if you ever met my mom, you would understand uh, that is the epitome of a strong, independent woman. And so having the support of my dad, my brother, and then my husband, who instead of holding me back or was fearful about me making this leap Mm -hmm. of faith in starting my consulting business uh, just a little over a year ago. I might have still done it, but man, it sure is sweeter when you have their support. And I mentioned that in the book that, mm-hmm. you know, for the men out there, we know we can do it without you. But if we have your support, even if it's a friend, or in my case, I have a wonderful brother and I joke around, he can be called in to be the muscle when necessary if anyone's messing with his sisters. But, you know, we know we can do it without the men. But yeah. if we have that support, it just gives us that extra boost of confidence yes. to go ahead and bet on yourself, which I believe is never wrong. I 100% agree with you. And I think that understanding and support comes in so many different forms. It comes in being the cheerleader, rooting you on. It comes in giving you the time and the space that you need to be able to cultivate this without feeling like you need to compete with that or being jealous of that or insecure of that. I mean, it's it's a lot of things that women grant to their husbands Mm -hmm for them to pursue their careers Mm -hmm. that they in turn now have to circle back and grant to us. Absolutely. And I think because I saw that role model in my own parents, Mm -hmm. my mom was a pharmacist, not because she loved pharmacy, but she liked it. Okay. And she was good at it, but she too was 80 years old. And back then there weren't a lot of careers for women that could earn a good enough salary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was born in Puerto Rico. My dad was too, grew up in New York, but she had this feeling that she really wanted to make sure just in case something happened, she could support herself. Well, that came from her mom because her mom was a widow. So she learned that lesson. And so as a result, my mom always instilled in each one of us, there's three of us girls and a brother, he's the baby, that it was so important to really always feel like you could take care of yourself. So she did that for my dad. And then when she wanted to go back to school, He said, okay, it's your time now. Mm -hmm. So she goes back and gets her MBA and starts her own business. And, you know, as a result, I got to see that firsthand. So it helped. Yes tremendously. Now that doesn't mean that you have to be lucky enough like me to have a great family, because I believe that whether it's your family of origin or whether it's through the powerful relationships you can make in friendships, you can have that level of support Mm -hmm. so that you never forget. You're never alone. You just have to ask for it. And as women, sometimes we just feel like if we're not perfect and we don't do it all ourselves, that there's something wrong with that. Yeah. Well, we also have to believe we're deserving of yes. that kind of support system and right. that network. Mm-hmm. And I'm with you. I mean, you are you were blessed to come from a, an incredibly supportive family. You had yes. these great role models who were demonstrating this really lovely paradigm for you. Right. But if you don't have that naturally, mm-hmm. you can most certainly create it and you yes. can you can choose your family. Dear yes. friends can become family. Yes. Colleagues can become family. Mm-hmm. So I think that's important. I'm glad you're speaking to that because I think it's important to seek that out. I think that network of support is critical because, you know, you can fall through the net. Sometimes it's hard putting yourself out there and there are some scary days and you need that kind of support and, and bench to be able to press upon. Yeah. And I think sometimes when you hit midlife, I think we forget that you're never too old for love. You're never too old for friendships. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are apps now where you can meet a female friend if you want, you know, just to get that level of support. And I think if even if I didn't have that level of support at home, because I've seen this happen with some girlfriends of mine, where they do had wonderful support. However, 
for some reason or another, maybe they started to surround themselves with people that for whatever reason really were not lifting them up. So even if they, even in the fact that they came from a great family of support, mm-hmm. sometimes if they weren't surrounding themselves with the right people, that actually could bring them down. It could interfere with their career, yes. their confidence in taking the next step because they're not setting those healthy boundaries and they don't realize the power that they really have to choose their friends. Yeah. Can't choose your family. Right. So I love like out there, right? Yes. But you can definitely um, choose who you surround yourself with. You yeah. know, we tell teenagers that, we tell young people that. But, but we need to apply that don't. too. We don't listen to that. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you're absolutely right. And I want to, you know, you've taught, you have really kind of done a deep dive in how impressive your family is and your daughters. Mm-hmm. But my dear, you're impressive yourself. I mean, you come to the table with three different degrees. So we're going to talk a little bit. We're, I'm sorry. We're going to talk a lot of it about you. And we're going to talk about your time in mm-hmm. the workforce mm-hmm. and how that equipped you right. and enabled you to write this book to yes. help other women yes. in the workforce. Because you're really sort of spelling out the secrets. Yes, I you am. Know, see, yes. From your experience in dealing with HR, your mm-hmm. experience in hiring and firing, and those difficult decisions and what employers and companies are looking for Mm -hmm. and what they're not looking for. And you will really, really help this audience and women who are listening and watching, thinking, okay, I want the secret sauce to be able to shine brightly and to be the standout Mm -hmm. when I'm applying for the Mm -hmm. job. So we'll talk more about that on the backside of this little break here on Over 50 and Flourishing. Hey there, fellow BritBox enthusiasts. If you've been following along, you know how much I rave about BritBox, my go-to streaming paradise for the finest in British television content. From exclusive mysteries to crime dramas, comedies and documentaries, boy, BritBox has it all. Lately though, I have been engrossed in the world of Vera. Brenda Blevins' performance is simply unmatched. And who can resist a cozy evening with Father Brown solving mysteries? Plus, the thief, his wife, and the canoe brought a true story to the screen that I absolutely could not have predicted. Okay, so now let me share my latest BritBox obsession with you. It is the brand new original series, Archie, starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who evolved into the legendary Cary Grant. It premiered on December 7th. Archie is a limited series that delves into Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood journey. It is the dramatic transformation from grit to glamour that just catapulted him into becoming the literally most famous person in the world. I had the privilege of enjoying Archie, and let me tell you, it is an absolute must watch. This series provides a fascinating look at really a different side of Cary Grant, and it's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. And here's the exciting part. Archie is exclusively available on BritBox, so what are you waiting for? Sign up for BritBox today and indulge in Archie and other fan favorites from any device. As a special treat for my U.S. and Canadian listeners, I've secured a limited time offer. Get a whopping 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But here's the catch. You only snag this deal by heading to BritBox.com and using my exclusive promo code OVER50 at checkout. That's simple. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to explore the captivating world of Archie and, of course, other incredible shows on BritBox. Seize the moment and get 50% off your first month. Use promo code OVER50 at BritBox.com. Happy streaming! As the holiday season approaches, we find ourselves in the pursuit of that perfect gift, but one that encapsulates the essence of our relationships and creates lasting memories. Well, today I'm excited to share with you a truly unique and heartfelt present. I am talking about StoryWorth. This is a remarkable online service that goes really beyond the ordinary, helping you and your loved ones preserve precious memories and stories for years to come. It's not just a gift, really. It's a meaningful connection to those who matter most in your life. Okay, so here's how it works. Every week, StoryWorth emails a thought-provoking question of your choice to either your relative or friend from their vast pool of possible options. These questions are not your run-of-the-mill inquiries. They're actually designed to spark profound and heartfelt responses. Questions like, what's the bravest thing you've ever done in your life? Or, if you could see into the future, What would you want to find out? That's just to name a couple. 
Now imagine this, after one year, StoryWorth compiles all of those captivating stories along with photos into this beautiful keepsake book. In my case, I'm the surviving child in my family, so this is a beautiful keepsake for my son. If you still have your parents with you, what an amazing opportunity to preserve your family history and get questions answered from them that maybe you didn't even think to ask. But it's not just about the end result. This is really about a journey of reading those weekly stories that help bridge the gaps. They help to connect you with loved ones, no matter how near or far apart you may be. StoryWorth has a way of unveiling fascinating stories and revealing unexpected facts about family members. With StoryWorth, I am giving those I love the most a thoughtful, personal gift from the heart and preserving their memories and stories for years to come. Just go to storyworth.com over 50 and save $10 on your first purchase. That's storyworth.com over 50 to save $10 on your first purchase. Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Dawn Hamby. She's the CEO and founder of Dr. Dawn Shop Talk, also the author of this book that really every woman who wants to get into the career force needs to read, and it's called The Career Woman's Secret Playbook. Before the commercial break, I was going to ask her about her background. She's got three different degrees. She is quite accomplished, been in the workforce for over 30 years. So give us a little bit about your backstory and what sure. you what you did. Yeah, sure. Uh, as you can tell, I love college degrees. This this is true. Uh, I'm guilty of that. So I You've have, got quite a few. I have a couple. <laughs> I do. I know. I'm one of those folks who loved school. If you were like that, you know, then you I understand. Was not. I <laughs> wanted out and I wanted you working, wanted, that's but it, that's okay. Done. I'm sure there are women who can relate to you. <laughs> My daughter was the same way. Yeah. Um, so I did. I did. So I got an undergraduate degree in psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always fascinated wa with why it seemed that certain people just thrived and others maybe crumbled under the same circumstances. So mm -hmm. there were, at the time, a lot of case studies done about that. I was like, oh, this is the degree I want. So my undergraduate degree is in psychology. But then I realized, um, at first I was going to go into therapy because I want to help people. Mm -hmm. But then I realized that I wanted to be able to maybe teach or explain I had a calling for that more than I did the therapy. So then I went into education, got my master's degree in secondary education with the specialty in teaching and also administration. And then after that, once I was teaching for a couple of years and just saw the power of a great teacher in helping young people understand their potential, then I knew I wanted to go into administration. I wanted to uh, help teachers really bring out someone's talents. Mm -hmm. So then I decided it was time to get the doctorate. And I got the doctorate not because I thought, you know, it made me smarter than anybody else or anything like that. But I just believe that regardless of your profession, whatever the highest credential is, I think it's important to believe enough in yourself to check that out, to mm -hmm. see if that's a good fit for you. So in education, I felt that getting a doctorate would show my faculty, my staff, myself, that I went to the top. I got the highest degree you can get. And then, uh, Dominique, I got a little, um, you know, extra by getting a double doctorate. So I, <laughs> I, I, I know, I just can't <laughs> help myself. But so, so they were, were you 30 <laughs> when you finished school? <laughs> my, go my goal it was so funny because I was in the workforce for a couple of years. But now that you say that, I got the doctorate. My goal was to get the doctorate before. Before I turned 30. That's funny. And I missed it by like two months. I was so mad. Ah. So mad. But I got real close. Okay. So yeah, but I was working in between all that. <laughs> uh, but my doctorate is in higher education, uh, again, with specialties in teaching and administration. So it enabled me to really understand how people learn mm -hmm. and also how to bring that talent out because the best teachers know that the student has it within them. Yes. And you have the power with your words to either build them up or if you really wanted to, you could destroy them. Mm -hmm. Some of the worst memories that, you know, some people have is what was said to them in front of students or in a public setting or something like that. So or then even I, in the workforce. Oh, in fact, Dominique, it's great that you, I mean, great segue there because that's exactly why I left 
teaching and went into the management side of teaching, administration, all of that. It, it was really because I realized I wanted to help people know how to teach, but then the ones who were disseminating that knowledge, I wanted to make sure that they too understood the power that they had and to make sure they were really helping people because you can help or you can mm -hmm. hurt depending on what you say. Or in some cases, I saw faculty doing too much for people. So then I realized that translated into the workforce. And that's how I ended up on the business side of education and then later working for the Department of Commerce, where my job for years was to prepare people for the workforce. And that's where the idea of my company began, because it was just this marriage between preparing people in school. And then once they got out of school, they didn't seem to always have that support. And see, I feel that that's so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to start specializing. And so now I specialize in helping companies and organizations and schools create an enviable workplace culture. Yes. And notice I say workplace. That's mm -hmm. the big difference. If people really don't have the maybe experience of being a boss themselves where they have the unique privilege of holding someone's career in their hands, then maybe they don't understand that it really should be a workplace, not a workforce. Mm. Some of my best friends I have met through my work. So whether they worked for me or whether we were coworkers, they're still dear friends today, 20, 30 years later. So I think that's the missing piece for women especially is to make sure that they're really part of an organization that not only supports them, mm -hmm. but is creating that workplace family. And not all, all organizations know how to do that. Yeah. So that is why I got all those degrees because, uh, but I didn't know that at first. It's almost like getting that one degree, then open doors to others. Yes. And then I realized, you know what? Let me do this. Let me go all the way and see if that in some way gives me additional knowledge. And what it did is like, I was joking, it doesn't make me smarter than anybody else, but it showed me how to research. It showed me how to not take everything at face value and make opinions on my own, analyze the results, interpret those results, things like that. And then because it opened doors for me, I got to be the kind of boss for my staff that I loved having myself. Mm. I got to pass that forward. Yes. And probably my one of my best moments of doing that is when one of my assistants, uh, I told my family, I felt like I really had made it when I had not one, but two assistants at the time. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> and so, but one of my assistants, she saw firsthand the way I wanted to treat our department. It became like a running joke mm. in my office that um, Dr. Dawn, she will cut you if you mess with her or her peeps. When I left that job to move over to commerce and then later start my business, the, the faculty and staff of that uh, institution, of, of that college, had carved out a plaque in the shape of a knife and at the top, it said, I will cut you. They engraved it. They shellacked it. <laughs> and then they all signed it because they knew in our department, we we wanted everyone to see that we really were this cohesive unit yeah. and see, I was going to have their back. Now, did that mean that if they did wrong, I wasn't going to talk to them? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But it was kind of like how we do with family and friends. It's kind of like... I can talk to them that way, but you can't talk to them that way. And sometimes employees just need that feeling that, you know what? We're all human. We make mistakes. Mm -hmm. All I can promise you is I won't make that mistake again. Right. I'm going to learn from it and move on. But they just need that security first of knowing you're there and you've got them. And if they don't have the skill set they need, you're going to figure out a way to help them get there. Yeah. So I think that's so important. Well, it's everything. And mm -hmm. as somebody who was in the workforce in a corporate environment yes. for more than 30 years, I can tell you I worked for um, employers and bosses and managers who governed more as like a coach and yes. some who were more dictators. Right. And I can tell you the environments mm -hmm. in which people really thrived. Mm -hmm. And if they felt part of a system, part of a right. team, right. Uh, motivated, included. Yes. But like you said, also, yeah. you know, everybody's going to make mistakes. Everybody's going to slip up. How are those handled? So really that type of environment is 
critical, Mm -hmm. not only for the health of a corporation, but the health of the people in it. And I think uh, for somebody who is trying to enter the workforce, that's got to be something. That's got to be one of the first things that your antenna and sonar needs to be dialed Mm -hmm. into. Mm -hmm. What type of an environment and a leadership environment is this? You know, is this somebody who is a motivator, who's a team player, who sees me as an integral part of a team? Exactly. Or is this somebody who sits on a throne and is going to boss, dictate, demand, and demean? Because that happens too. And I've been subjugated to all of it, the good, Mm -hmm. bad, and the indifferent. Mm -hmm. And I know the environments where I thrive better. Right. So I'm really glad that you're bringing that up and you're talking about just the role of leadership in a corporation. Yes. It's so important. It really is. Even in today's you know, one of the things I get to do that I'm privileged to do is I do a lot of research to stay up to date on trends because the clients I have, Dominique, they don't have time for that. They're just trying to live their lives and and those kinds of things. So we still know today that employers don't leave jobs, they leave managers. And there are so many new managers right now Mm -hmm. because companies more than ever are going through a lot of change. So if they don't hire people, whether it's me or another consultant that knows what it's like, To have someone at the end of the day look at you and say, you're the best boss I ever had. If that's not happened, Mm -hmm. you're doing it wrong. Correct. You really are. And, you know, back to that example of empowering women, when I had that one assistant I was telling you about, who later became a supervisor herself, and I had written her a letter of recommendation to help her do that, she got the highest performance evaluation that the state can give Mm. that next year, within a year of her working. And she reached out to me and she said, if it wasn't for you, I could never have done it. She saw how I, you know, ran that department and that I saw it as us working with each other. Correct. I, when I would identify somebody as someone who worked for me, I never really said that they worked for me. I always said, oh yeah, I worked with so-and-so. Yes, yes. Because here's another secret. If, if you're in the workforce right now and you have a boss who's constantly telling people that he's not the, oh, I'm not the boss, or, you know, I, I don't see myself that way, or, you know, I don't like to micromanage. If they've said it more than once, they probably are micromanaging. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to tell people you're the boss. Like, people already know. Know that, so exactly. So you probably have come across that, too. And sure. I think women take it to heart. That's why when the book came out, oh my goodness, did I get teased by the men in my office? They were like, hey, Dr. Dawn, I thought you loved us too. And I said, let me tell you something. Hmm. Y'all know when mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So this is a public service for you because I don't want your wife, your sister, your daughter to come home and bite the heads off of everybody in, in her circle because she's so miserable at work. Maybe she's not setting up those healthy boundaries. She doesn't know how to tell HR she needs help. Or sometimes the boss really would change something but they really never hear it. Mm -hmm. Either they don't hear it because that woman is too intimidated to say anything. So I've got lots of videos and information in the book about how to do that. But sometimes it's that that woman, especially, we take it to heart. Like I said, there's lots of research why, but they don't feel heard. They don't feel valued. They don't feel like their opinion is going to make a difference. Mm. And even the the snootiest of bosses, they usually have their own boss. So they're going to listen when enough people are saying something. And I think people get so discouraged, especially women. They, they have a harder time with that work-life balance. And I'm like, you are such... There are so many times... Uh, which is another reason I wrote the book where I couldn't say something in an interview Mm -hmm. when I was working for another organization. And it would break my heart when I couldn't say what they just did wrong or what they're doing right if they would just continue to do that and quit doubting themselves. But if I'm their personal coach, and that's why I'll never give up the coaching side. I love doing workshops and seminars. I love all that. But I love the one-on-one coaching as well because then I get to tell that person, Mm -hmm. you did great. Or, you know what? I've been on the other side of that desk. I have a feeling they groomed someone for this. And that's the reason you're not getting the job. And uh, maybe and they you paid don't know their that dues. going in. No, you think it's you. You think it's you. And sometimes that other person who maybe got the job, 
maybe they really weren't the best candidate. Maybe they weren't even deserving, but you don't know. You don't know if that person had worked their tail off for years under someone else's leadership and they really are the best fit. Right. That woman walks in there and she thinks she did something wrong. But as the person who's interviewing you, I can't tell you that, yeah, we're interviewing people, but this other person has some advantages because they've been here. We know their brand. They've mm-hmm. built this personal and professional brand. That's why I have a whole chapter about it yes, in the book. Yes, I read that. It's, so it's very important. important. Yes. It's so important because what people say about you, mm-hmm. as Jeff Bezos says, what they say about you when you leave the room, that's your brand. Yes. So even if your resume is fantastic your brand precedes you. And what I hope for the women out there is that they will have enough confidence. They will let let their work ethic be their resume. Mm -hmm. So the next time they don't even have to apply for that job because it's going to come their way. I've had that myself happen twice. So if I can do it, I know they can't because I know how to get them there if they can't figure that out on their own. Sure. That's what coaches are for. Yes. I, I mean, and I, I can testify to that too. I mean, when I was in the TV news business, right. you know, opportunity kept coming to me because I guess I was doing what it is I was supposed to do. And I was honoring a skill set that God gave me. I was right. trying to strive for excellence and not perfection. I was trying yes. to be my best employee, to constantly ask for feedback. Right. How can I grow? Not right. to have ego in the way, right. to be humble and to be to be right. a kind, gracious right. employee. So, yes. you know, as, as I was growing as a journalist, I was also growing as an employee and learning those skill sets of right. what it takes to advance within a corporation. Those are the things that we can control. What are the uncontrollables? You mentioned yes. somebody going to an interview yes. and somebody else is already kind of pegged for right. the job, but still the corporation has to look. It's part of HR requirement. Absolutely. You've got to look from without, mm-hmm. from outside, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. even though you may have somebody from within who you want to hire. So that's an uncontrollable. What are some other uncontrollables? Well, I think you hit it right there when you said and reminded your audience that there are all these things we can't control. We have to always remind ourselves, and I talk about mindset. That's Mm -hmm. why in the book, I'm going to cover four key ingredients to helping you not drive yourself crazy in thinking the problem is always you. So one of the first things I think is so important to think about in terms of what you can and cannot control is what you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. That self-talk is so important. So I talk about unleashing what I call a CEO mindset for two reasons. CEO, in other words, means, you know, if you were to look it up, it literally means not just chief executive officer, but it means who has the most authority in your life. So if you walk out of that interview and you don't get it, are you the kind of person who's going to immediately think again that you did something wrong or can you flip that script? Can you kind of turn that switch on so that you realize, Hey, this ain't my first rodeo. Mm -hmm. I know there are times somebody else has gotten it for whatever reason. So what is your belief system? CEO to me means that you have three ingredients that make people successful. The top CEOs in the world have these three ingredients, compassion, enthusiasm, an organization. So I have a whole section in the book where I talk about how those three things are three things you can control a hundred percent. It will affect how you perceive the world yes, and how you perceive things that are happening. So it gives you that reminder that you're responsible for the effort, not the outcome. Yeah. So many of the world's millionaires and billionaires have found out the hard way that even when they didn't get something, and they ended up having to pivot, oh my goodness, sometimes it has meant the world of difference. In fact, sometimes they've gotten more success by going in this other direction than beating their head against the wall. It puts you back in the driver's Mm -hmm. seat and it makes you realize you are Mm -hmm. not a victim and that this happened for a reason. So you talk about, you've got four strategies in the book and I really want to dive into those strategies because they are, they are so applicable. They are so important to embrace and they are totally based on success because they are proven tried and true strategies. So we're going to dive into those with Don Hamby, the author of The Career Woman's Secret Playbook. The secrets are going to be <laughs> laid out on this podcast. Secret no more when we come back right after this break. Hey. 
Hey there, coffee enthusiasts. If you're anything like me, you do appreciate a cup of coffee that's not just a caffeine fix, but actually an experience, rich in flavor, quality, and convenience. But let's face it, settling for burnt, messy, or mediocre coffee, that can be a major morning disappointment. Sure, the $7 drive through option might seem tempting, but the expense, the possible burnt taste, and those never-ending lines, it's not so inviting. That's where Cometeer comes in. And trust me, it is a game changer for us coffee lovers, especially those of us over 50 and flourishing, right? Cometeer offers hyper fresh, flash frozen coffee that delivers an out of this world flavor. And here's the best part. We're talking no machines, no gadgets, and absolutely no cleanup. Whether you're into hot coffee, iced coffee, lattes, or more, Cometeer has you covered. Now recently, I tried Cometeer, and I have to tell you, it is like having a coffee shop in your freezer. I melt my favorite brew, mix it with my oat milk, and voila, I have an iced latte that just rivals any fancy cafe creation. The quality of the flavor literally took me by surprise, and the convenience is amazing, especially during this busy holiday season. And guess what? You can join the future of coffee right now by heading to cometeer.com slash over 50. When you buy a starter pack of 16 cups, you'll even get a free little travel mug to enjoy your coffee on the go. That is cometeer.com slash over 50 for your starter pack and free travel mug. Now let's talk about the exceptional quality and taste that Cometeer delivers. These perfectly brewed coffees come from award-winning small batch roasters like Intelligentsia, Onyx, George Howell, and more. Never burnt or diluted, just expertly brewed for optimal flavor and flash frozen just to lock in that freshness. Imagine having your favorite hot or iced coffee in seconds. For hot coffee, you just drop that frozen puck into your cup, you pour in the hot water and watch it just melt into perfection. And the best part, as I said, no messy grounds or dirty equipment. Cometeer's 100% recyclable capsules make cleanup an absolute breeze. So this New Year's Eve, impress your guests with your coffee skills. That's right, Cometeer makes it easy to create enchanting coffee cocktails that'll liven up your celebrations. It's also the perfect gift for anybody who appreciates a truly great cup of coffee. Hey, join the future of coffee with Cometeer's perfectly brewed coffee, ready in seconds at home or on the go. Go to cometeer.com slash over 50 to purchase a 16 cup starter pack and get a free travel mug when you sign up. That's a free travel mug right here when you sign up at cometer.com slash over 50. Okay, my guest today is Dawn Hamby, the secret uh, career woman secret playbook. And are y'all ready for some secrets? <laughs> I sure am. I have them all written. I know the secrets already, but I'm so excited to have Dawn impart them to you all. So insider secret number one, and I wrote this big enough so that I could see without glasses because who needs that reflectivity today? Um, insider secret number one, mastering your mindset. So we were talking a little bit about this mm -hmm. before the commercial yes, break yes. about how you frame things mm -hmm. in your mind mm -hmm. can help determine your outcomes. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Do a deeper dive on that yes. for me, please. There are so many pieces to that. So I cover in the book how to sort of awaken that CEO within you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you have to run your business one day. I'm not talking about CEO in the traditional sense. I'm talking about the three key ingredients that most CEOs out there have, and that's compassion enthusiasm and organization. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. So in the book and with clients, I will take a deeper dive on why that works. For example, compassion, having compassion for ourselves when we make a mistake. There's brain research behind why women mm -hmm. beat themselves up in greater numbers. <laughs> and, and when we were on the break, as you know, I, I, until I was in supervision, I didn't see the gender differences. Yeah. I didn't see that women would beat themselves up and have all this negative self-talk. So you could have something great happen to you. And in bigger numbers, you might have a man give that 
the the attributes of why that happened, he would credit himself with that mm. in the best sense of the word, not being a narcissist or anything like that. But my female staff in greater numbers would still have this negative self-talk. If we did something great, say we're planning an event, they would call me 500 times to make, every, make sure every detail was in place before the event took place. The gentlemen would work their tails off, but then they would let it go. Mm. And they would let the chips fall where they may. And if mistakes happened, they were fine with that. Boy, I, we have a hard time letting oh, go, don't we? Oh my gosh. What Absolutely. is that with us? Well, do you know that there's a section of the brain that when it comes to women, they will, as a coping mechanism, mm-hmm. I mean, there's tons of research behind this, they will kind of activate the part of their brain that makes them concentrate on what they can control. So if can or can't. Ever, what they can't. can't. So for example, if they're feeling stressed right. and they're feeling out of control, they realize that something they could do is all of a sudden they're motivated to organize the closet. All of a sudden they want to clean that one shelf in the refrigerator. There's You're describing pro- my mother to a T. <laughs> Sunday was the cleaning day. So now I get where it came from. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. This is why you're not crazy. Okay, you good. are tapping into that part of your brain that says, you know what? I'm so stressed about this thing over mm-hmm. here, but I can control this little piece of my apartment. Yeah. I can control this one part of my house. Interesting. And I always do. followed her conversations we with did. her mother. So now I, I am totally understanding that psychology, yes. Dawn. Thank Let's you. Let's break the chain. Yes. We can break the chain and we can let go and we can realize what the world's top billionaires already know. Guess what? When you make the mistake, sometimes you're going to learn a greater lesson as a result of that mm-hmm. anyway. So take the action step. And with mindset, that's what I want people to do. I have a course about this. I have all kinds of stuff on the website to teach you how to do this. But you got to start with your mindset. The reason I don't start with the other secrets first Mm. is anything else that I have to share with you, you're going to dismantle it all because you're going to go right back. Mm -hmm. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to dig your heels in. You're going to think there's only one way to do it. And if we don't do it that way, you get so much more stress where many times a guy will just kind of go with the flow and he can see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So it's a coping mechanism. It's real fascinating research. I'll send you tons of articles if you're interested. Yes. In why we do that. But it always starts with our thought life. Always. Our thought life dictates our outcomes completely. Absolutely. Um, There was something that you wrote about in Mastering Your Mindset, Mm -hmm. and that is the scarcity versus abundance mindset. Elaborate on that. That was intriguing for me. We see that so much in the workforce. We really do. Uh, And we're seeing that in leadership. So in other words, this belief that if you are amazing and you are doing a great job and we're in similar industries or maybe even in the same department, all of a sudden I feel less than. I feel like there's less slices of that metaphorical pie Mm. left over where they're not coming from this abundance mindset where if you see someone else doing great there, that just means that what they're doing works. And so we have to work on that. We don't want it to be seen as, Oh, I, I had that idea. I guess I, Maybe I have nothing else to add to the conversation. And that's so not true. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that I share with women in the book is you've got to stop that unhealthy pattern. You've got to break that chain. You have to make sure what you say to yourself is empowering. We, you know, I don't want people running around and thinking that they're so perfect. They never make a mistake. But if you don't think you are all that in a bag of chips, Mm -hmm. There's something wrong. Yes. You have to believe that you were meant for a greater purpose. Yes. And that you are not alone when you face hardships or when a mistake happens. So you got to get out of your own way. And the only way to do that is with an abundance mindset. Mm -hmm. It gives you a suit of armor, basically. It doesn't prevent bad things from happening because if we're lucky enough to live to midlife and beyond our lives are going to be facing some some real pain and that's okay yeah. and i i feel like women tend to come more from a scarcity mindset i think society propels that sometimes too it seems to encourage us to be more competitive against each other Completely. instead of realizing hey i got here i now want to show you how and i'm going to reach down and pull you up and help you get to the next level and yes. that's what what i hope is that when women read this book they have as much fun reading it as i did writing it for them because these are all the secrets I couldn't really 
give a deep dive on if you worked for me or if you were applying for a promotion with me or mm-hmm. even the job, because HR would kill me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I can't you tell you. You couldn't share it back <laughs> then, but now you but, can. But now as your private coach, yeah. I sure can. Yeah. I can do that. Well, we both can, having, exactly. having come from that. And I yes. really, I'm so glad that you have elaborated on that. Mm-hmm. I, I distinctively saw the difference mm-hmm. in people who had an abundance yes. mindset versus a scarcity mindset in yes. the workforce yes. and workplace. I'm going to reframe oh, that. Love Thank it. you. <laughs> um, and, and how that impacted their trajectory. Mm-hmm. And I think that there are two areas of responsibility in that role. Mm-hmm. So let's say you're in an environment where your equal is a contemporary and one, one person gets promoted to a position. Right. So the right. person who gets promoted gets to basically self-actualize what it is that they wanted for themselves, that right. moving up, that ability right. to expand their... Um, their skill set, their positions, and what they can contribute to the company. Right. But like you said, I think it's also on that person to impart wisdom mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. people still in the environment and to share and, right. and not not gatekeep right. those, those things that right. maybe set them apart, as well as I think it's equally as important for the other person who did not get that promotion to not either A, lose sight or Mm -hmm. vision or hope in themselves, or even worse, what I see happening so badly in the workforce, workforce, and it's workplace, I'm so sorry, (laughs) I'm really trying to reframe that now. Um, But but what makes me so sad is women tearing other women Mm -hmm. down. Oh, yeah. Because because of promotion, because of whatever, um, and just horrible lies, manipulation, backstabbing, and things like that, which never leads to anything good, by the way. No. So, so, Thank you for that reminder that we right. should have an abundance mindset. Right. Whether we receive the promotion or not, maybe right. that promotion wasn't meant for you. Exactly. Maybe there's something different or better mm-hmm. suited for you. Mm-hmm. But please, in the process, don't bring each other down. You know, we need right. to support and encourage and impart and learn from one another. Exactly. And and you said it so beautifully because that's the big lesson Yes, is that there's enough work for us all. And when you have a woman who's in a rare position of leadership, that's why I felt so privileged, but I knew that not all women were like that, Mm -hmm. but why, why take it out on the whole gender? The true simple fact is there's some sometimes broken people that are walking around amongst us. Right. And it knows no gender. It knows no position. It knows no race or ethnicity. I can't fix that person. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is maybe even be empathetic towards them. Yes. Now, that doesn't mean I just roll over and become a doormat because that's uh, something else that I talk about happens in the book. Because we mm-hmm. tend to spread ourselves way too thin. We, we take everybody else's drama and their responsibility sometimes on our shoulders without meaning to. Yeah. So if we can change that mindset and realize, let people just prove to you who they are. Start with that abundance mindset where you're always going to presume the best about that person until they prove you differently. Right. And if they do... Well, innocent until you, proven guilty, absolute, right? Right. It, right. Isn't that foundational? It's absolutely foundational. I yes. used to teach American history and civics, so I can pr- I promise Thank you, you, I know the Constitution. That is definitely <laughs> constitutional. It is. It really is. And I think because of that scarcity mindset, people presume they didn't get the promotion for things that maybe have nothing to do with them. Or sometimes it's just my belief system is that it just wasn't your time. Mm-hmm. I had a rare opportunity to be offered not just one position, but two positions I could choose from. I didn't even have to interview for the job. That was because of branding, which we'll get to later. Yes. But because of that opportunity, it was the right place at the right time. And ironically, that same woman who was very high up in our organization, I had applied, I had actually applied for a different position three years before that. And she went with someone else. Now, what I didn't know at the time is, and she didn't either, It's really a blessing that I didn't get that particular job because that job I didn't even realize would have included so much more travel, so much more pressure. And at the time I was a single mom. I could have done that job and I would have done it well, but it was sort of like a God thing Mm -hmm. where I didn't get it. She saw how I reacted to it. I didn't burn that bridge. 
I wasn't trying to kiss booty either. I just knew that there was a reason behind it. And we and may it not would see it at the moment. Itself. It always yes, does yes. in time. And she saw that I wasn't putting on airs. I wasn't trying to, like I said, kiss her booty or try. I wasn't doing any of sure. that. I literally was just accepting of it. Now, again, yeah. that didn't mean I didn't give 150% to what I did get. Yeah. And I continue to put myself out there. And that's what I teach people how to do with putting yourself out there and being confident without being it's so extreme that you never think you do anything wrong. Sure. You know, there's that that's balance. unhealthy as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But because of that relationship, then three years later, she offered me to, a position that eventually got me here. Yeah. And was better suited and was for you. so much better suited right. for me. And, and think I think about know. the growth that yes. took place in you Absolutely. in having to deal with that initial perceived rejection. Yes. Right. And as we know, there's always a reason behind something to right. be revealed in time, but that's where we dig in our heels. We grow right. in our resilience. We grow in our faith. We grow in our mm-hmm. understanding of the process and not let it taint who right. we are as people and how right. we treat ourselves and how we treat others. Absolutely. Because with that mindset that you just described... That says it all. Again, it's like that suit of armor. It doesn't Mm -hmm. protect bad things from happening to you. Right. But the slings and arrows bounce off because you have such a strong foundation of faith in yourself and why the world is is doing what it's doing. And you know you're not alone. You've got a circle of support, whether it's your family of origin or the one that you create for yourself. That's why in the book, I also talk about that special friendship that only women can give each other Mm -hmm. and to surround yourself with the right people because they can either bring you up or bring you down and they're fear becomes your fear. That's why mindset has to be the first thing you do. We don't even get into all the other secrets until that's really locked down. Because again, you'll tear everything else apart if you don't have that first. And I know that's the first thing when you're doing your, you know, Mm -hmm. consultations with women is really locking that in. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to move on to secret number two. I love this. Passion rediscovery. Girl, you are speaking my language. (laughs) I mean, we talk so much about passion here on this platform and how important it is. You know, I I truly believe that our passions are our God seeds that are planted in us. We are all unique and different. We Mm -hmm. were all gifted with different talents and abilities. And and we know when we hook into those, we know the joy that we feel. It comes from such a deep cellular place. Exactly. So talk to us about passion rediscovery, because isn't that going to dictate whether work is joy versus just being work? Absolutely. That's right. And as they say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And there's a reason that resonates with people. So that's why I do that secret. And we take that deep dive in the next chapter. It's the second Mm -hmm. kind of like leg of that tabletop. So Mm -hmm. these four foundational secrets that we're going to talk about today, they're sort of that legs of the tabletop. So that tabletop is just stronger if all four are in place, but you can probably get away with one or two. Mm -hmm. Got to have the mindset and the passion. I want, (laughs) I want that to come second instead of first, because again, if you still are speaking to yourself, if that conversation in your head is a negative one, then no matter how passionate you are, you're just not going to have the willpower to withstand it because deep down inside, everybody likes to be right. So if you tell yourself deep down inside that you don't deserve it, or that, oh, it's not going to work out anyway. If, if that's your mindset, then no matter how passionate you are, it just won't last. No, it'll be major failure to launch. Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, you might notice I said rediscovery. Yes. That's a powerful word. It is. Because I'm not asking you to create it. Yeah. You always it's, had, you already it. had it. You already had it. Yeah. You just have to sort of get out of your own way mm-hmm. to rediscover it. Yep. And that's one of the reasons why with clients and in the book, we look at the ways to kind of bring that back. And all the research out there shows it's easier for you to figure out what those are if you kind of go back in blocks of time, Mm -hmm. don't go back to your earliest memory of what you love to do necessarily. Think of it in stages like milestones. So you might go back to early childhood and try to remember, what did I used to love to do? Am I even doing any of that anymore? And then I have people really evaluate their time because people oftentimes will say, oh gosh, well, you know, I love to paint or I love to dance or I love to go to yoga, Mm -hmm. all those things, right? Um, But I don't have the time for that. Yeah. And so although time management is something that is very important and is another secret, you can't even get to that until you really discover again 
that passion and what it is, we'll worry about the time later. Let's mm-hmm. first go back and figure out what it is. Because if you're not living your passion, which you can do with your job, yes. then if we're lucky enough to have a full-time job, I mean, you're looking at what, 40 to 50 hours a week of maybe being miserable and waiting until the clock says five o'clock to then start having passion in your life. Yeah. And it's, it's so not unnecessary. Right. It's so unnecessary. Uh, there's a, a, a mindset that I call the dream job mindset. We cover that at the very end of that particular chapter on mindset before we get to passion, because I have seen firsthand that you can turn any job into your dream job, even if it's only a stepping stone to mm. the next job. Because the skill set you're going to learn in there is going to reawaken your passion. Completely in how you see it. In how you see it. That's right. And that's why it's so important to kind of go on what I call a passion quest. Yeah, I love so that. You have to you have to test your passion IQ first. And if you're sitting here... You're sitting there going, you test your passion IQ? Have, yeah. Because so, I'm going to score high. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you literally, there are some questions that I ask. We literally kind of go back to those milestones and we figure out how much of what you love to do are you putting in your life, whether it's during work, before work or after work. So you give yourself kind of a score. And if your score is really low, I don't want your audience to get discouraged because it just means it's been a while. Sure. And mothers especially are horrible about making sure that everybody in their life, especially their children, Mm -hmm. even if you're a mom to furry children, right? Our furry children, we love them too. We are better about making sure that they have everything they need and that they are just having the most fulfilling life and all the dog toys, all the things. Yep. And then we put ours on a back burner. Exactly. There's that mindset again. Mm-hmm. We can play the martyr real easy. Right. And so that that is one of the most fun things to do is to go on, to give yourself a score, yeah. see where you fall, and then go on that passion quest and find out starting today, what can I do? Even if it's just five minutes of mm-hmm. a hobby that I let go of. And here's something else women do in greater numbers. We say to ourselves, I can't sing. I can't dance. I can't paint. We completely dis-enable. Absolutely. And here's the deal. Children don't do that. No, of course not. They do it. They do it. They they may not do it well, but guess what? They don't care. That's not what you... you Exactly. Right. Exactly. They they dance as if, as they say, no one's watching. Watching, right. right. But we we yes. we put judgment Absolutely. around everything. Absolutely. That we have to hit a certain standard or we're not good enough. We're already putting yeah. parameters yeah. before we're even discovering. That's why what you do is so important. I remember one of your YouTube shorts where you were literally dancing to that song about what the 1st of September or yeah. whatever. And first of all, <laughs> Unlike most of us, though, she really did look great dancing. But, oh, but the but I joy. Love to dance. You like, love I to don't dance. care what I don't care what I look like. Exactly. I mean, I could be goofy looking or whatever. But, but that's inspiring. that's a childhood passion. It's a childhood passion, and you you know when you put yourself out there on you know social media or on a platform like this, yeah. you are taking a risk because you open yourself up to judgment. Yeah. And I think that's where it's so sad. Yeah. Is it's a brave step. Mm. to video yourself having fun and putting it out there and saying, I love this song and I love to dance and by gosh, I'm going to do, do it. it. Right? And it doesn't so, matter what others think. Exactly. And that's where you inspire so many women by doing that. And so if we could just take that phrase and kind of flip that around. I, I love to paint. Will I sell one of my paintings? My daughter thinks my paintings are amazing and she has <laughs> one in her house. But I mean, no, it's not if I can paint I think people think you have to be like an artist to do it. You have to be well enough to have your own concert to sing. Who cares, right? Yes. And if your family or friends are making you feel silly for wanting to do that, that's why it's so important, again, to surround yourself with the right people. Get support. Yes. And make sure that their fear doesn't become your fear because that's the that is the number one way to kill your passion is fear. Mm-hmm. Fear of putting yourself out there. What if I'm gonna look silly? Who cares? Right. Who cares? Because you will get more and more resentful. You won't even know why. Mm-hmm. And it's because your tank is so low. Your fuel, it's low because you're not filling yourself up with, with things joy. you love. It's yes. joy. It's pure joy. Yes. Whatever that looks like for you. Right. And it's a fun chapter because you get to kind of rediscover that. It's always yeah. there. And you know, and it's okay if you're going through hard times, you have to put certain things on a back burner, but here's the problem. 
women then have a, <laughs> a harder time putting themselves back on those front burners, mm-hmm. right? So it's okay if there's major things going on and you have to put it aside for a minute. But if it becomes the norm, yeah. if it's no longer, you know, the if it's not the exception, as they say, is it the exception or the rule? If it's happening so infrequently that you're, you know, passionate about your hobbies and what you love to do, then that needs to change. And sometimes yeah. it just could be that they have... They haven't looked at their time management in a while. Sure. Like, I love a Netflix binge. Oh, my goodness. My daughter, too, has got me hooked on all kinds of shows. So that, And the Netflix, they are so smart about how they do this because it's great shows. And then before you even click out of that one episode, the next one is loading up and it says it's going to start in five seconds. Yeah, yeah. So unless you take the remote and, and quickly stop say, it. stop, it's stop, happening. Stop. Yes. So I want to still see all my shows. But if I say I'm also passionate about, say, walking or exercise or learning how to play the piano, yeah. learning how to speak another language, whatever you it You have to be, hit the kill switch to make room for something else. There you go. Yes. And, and here's another reason we don't have that much passion sometimes. Women have a harder time saying no. Yes, we do. They don't understand no is grammatically a complete sentence. Yes, it, it really is. is. <laughs> it, yes, is. it is. I have seen men and it's okay in a meeting. To say it unapologetically. Absolutely. You don't have to be rude about no. it. No. But I would absolutely, I, the difference between when I would ask a male staff member sometimes if they could do something that was voluntary. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if I say they have to do it, they're going to do it. But if I ask, oh, well, would you be able to do such and such? The men had an easier time saying, oh, gosh, I really wish I could, but I can't. Yeah. And then they stopped talking. There Without was the silence. explanation. There was silence. Yes. I didn't even know what to do with that. Yes. The women would regurgitate oh, all of the reasons why oh, they I'm couldn't. I'm so sorry, but yes. maybe later. And, and I can have, yes, because guilt, 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 guilt. Because we're trained and wired to be there for Absolutely. everybody and everything all the time time we to the really point of are. burnout. Even in this modern age, yes. you would think in 2023, it might be a little different, but that's why they're burning out. Yeah. And that's why when they get home, they're just knocking the heads off of their loved ones because they've had it. Yep. I don't want our women to get to that point, right? No. Especially career women who have to balance so much. Yes. They have a career. They still are in greater numbers giving it their all when they get home. So there's a section in the book Mm -hmm. where I talk about that gender difference. And you would think that the ladies, when they would get home, they would just want to put their feet up, have a big glass of wine and say, I'm done. But they many times not only can't because of their circumstances, but they don't feel like they can't also. Right. So they, in greater numbers, are still the caregivers, are still the ones that maybe are going to have to do the grocery shopping and all those kinds of things so they can wear themselves out big yeah. time if yeah. they don't have that passion. Yeah, that, that's an important thing to really settle with and prioritize. Um, secret number three, love this, uncovering your grit. Mm. And there was an interesting thing that mm-hmm. you wrote about in that chapter, and it was um, stop working so hard and yeah. see what happens. Yeah. I love that because yeah. we tend to think that the more time we put in, the better the outcome. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that is such a mistake. You know, there's that saying, work smarter, not harder. Yes. And I think women have a harder time figuring out what that looks like. So for example, I would notice that there were times where I would ask for staff to volunteer for some big events. Maybe the women weren't signing up because of their confidence about that. You saw men in greater numbers not letting the fear of not knowing how to do something perfectly get in their way. Mm -hmm. So guess what would happen? They would sign up for those events that were more visible. So the woman's over here working really hard behind the scenes and there's nothing wrong with that. We need that 100%. But sometimes in greater numbers, you'd see the guys out there being willing to give it a shot. They're not going to be so afraid of looking foolish, let's say, if they don't know everything or do everything perfectly, whatever right. that looks like, right? So it is so, so important for women to understand if they can awaken that grit, they will become unstoppable, but it's not by driving themselves into the ground. Mm-hmm. If they would let go of maybe the number of hours they're spending on certain things and just be more strategic. So we know in the world of business and in career that visibility increases credibility and that increases profitability. Mm. If you're not visible, then you're not able sometimes to take advantage of certain opportunities. So it's not plugging in more hours. It's actually being a little bit more strategic Mm -hmm. with the projects you take on. And if you couple that with the ability to say no, and I would say no 
with grace. I mean, sure. I was never like, no, absolutely not. Like I wasn't <laughs> rude about it, but I would say it in such a way that it felt comfortable to me mm-hmm. without adding three more sentences of explaining why I couldn't do something. Right. So if you stop working so hard and are a little more strategic, and then you make sure you couple that not only with saying no, but making sure it's something you love to do, maybe your boss doesn't even know that you would absolutely love to be the one to give that speech because a lot of people are afraid of public speaking. He may not even know you're interested in that. She may not know you're interested in that at Mm -hmm. all. And if you're someone that's a positive person, you might come across like you are so happy at work that you wouldn't want to take on a different task. So you have to be proactive about being visible, saying no, and then again, stop working so hard. Let's see what happens when you don't. Mm. And let's see if we can get you to work smarter and not harder so you don't spread yourself so thin. Yeah, I think it's uh, absolutely great. And and we tend to overextend yeah. to the point of exhaustion, which absolutely. makes us ineffective in everything that we do. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So your last secret is time management. Mm -hmm. And that's a biggie, which really ties into what you were just talking about. Absolutely. And so many times people will ask me, well, because they always think they don't have enough time for everything. They always ask me, why don't you start with that first? Back to that mindset. I don't want you to work longer hours. It's something you can't stand first off. (laughs) So we need to go back to your mindset and then we need to make sure that what you're doing, you're passionate about because you really can turn any job into the dream job or it's that stepping stone to what you were meant to do. Mm -hmm. And then that grit, you have to uncover that grit third because if you don't, then those few times where you have to work extra hard, let me tell you what, the fastest way to get the promotion is not to look at your watch. Yep. You are the first in the office. You're the last to leave, but not always. If you're the first in the office, but you're working on the very things that don't really affect the profit line, then all that hard work, like we said, work smarter, not harder, mm-hmm. is going to just go out the window. And then if you're not prioritizing yourself in your time management, and I love reminding people of this, self-care yeah, is not everything. selfish. It's not. Right? It's not. So that time management becomes everything because you're not going to look like the powerful, wonderful, beautiful, professional woman that you are meant to be if you show up to that meeting frazzled because yep. <laughs> that part of your brain that makes you want to look at every detail and fix things before you go out the door and you know you gave yourself plenty of time to go out that door and yet why are you still 10 minutes late? Uh-huh. And if you're always 10 minutes late, if you're late by the same amount of time each and every time, there's a deeper issue, we can fix that. If you're late always, maybe even just by a little bit of time, we can still fix that too. If you're not late, but you feel like time is always slipping through your fingers, that's a little bit more challenging, but it's still fixable. So I help people understand, start from that abundance mindset. Quit thinking you only have 24 hours in a day. Never do that to yourself. If you think of it as a 24-hour day, you might as well just turn around and go to bed right now because by by the time you take the amount of hours out of your, for your work day, by the time you take away that eight hours of sleep minimum that we all should get. And sometimes we don't. That's right. If you take away just errands and just the basic things we have to do to run a household, you look at what's left and you think, oh my gosh, that's all I have left. That's why it's so important, number one, to be passionate about what you do. Because think about all the hours we spend doing that. But if you switch your mindset from a 24 hour day to a 168 hour week, there's whole books written about this subject. Mm -hmm. That right there is going to empower your audience to understand, hey, we all have the same amount of time. I'm going to make sure I'm using it wisely on things I love to do. It's going to make me a better employee, a better boss, a better friend, a better sister, daughter, mother, all those things. Yeah. Instead of feeling like it always goes away. And let me tell you, uh, I recently did an episode on how to reimagine your weekends. Because some of my women that are so good about actually being in charge of their schedules during the week, on the weekend... They want to rest and relax, which you should do. But if they don't structure their weekend at all, not only do they not have anything to look forward to, hello, passion, where's the passion if you want to take that class, try that new restaurant, go to that new shop, whatever it is. If you don't have something to look forward to, that 
in of itself is kind of depressing. And then number two, if you don't structure anything, then what happens on Monday to, to your career women? Yeah. On Monday, they feel like, They're oh my out. gosh. I, I don't even know where the weekend went. Yep. I'm done. Yep. I'm a big believer in scheduling Absolutely. everything. Absolutely. Scheduling yes. what needs to be done, scheduling what wants to, what you want right. to have done, scheduling your yoga, scheduling time with friends, scheduling yes. the walk. I, I, I need to see it. I so I write it I down. If I, I look at too. it, I'm like, ooh, this must be important. It's written down. I have to do it. But isn't Absolutely. it important? It's so important. Listen, I told you about all those lots of degrees, right? All these degrees that I, well, here I am a professional, right? Professional educator, coach, all these things. What you just said is exactly what's proven in all the, the research. If you actually write something down yep. from just from an education standpoint, there is magic to seeing the written word, writing it down. And while you're writing it, you're thinking about it. There's sort of a trifecta that happens in learning. Yes. That if you write it out and you visually see it, even if you tend to be more of an auditory learner than a visual one, it's still very powerful. It, That's there's accountability why it works. with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. The accountability. When I create uh, to-do lists and things for my client, because I love a to-do list. I love creating all kinds of cheat sheets and checklists. I'm a little obsessed with it. I probably need to see somebody about that. But, <laughs> but it's working for it. you, so it's I don't know if you should. For me, right? Is that, but there's something magic about checking things off. Yes, because when agreed. I'm when I'm working with a client who feels so overwhelmed and she doesn't feel like she has anything in her control. We start with that to-do list, and we focus on just today. We focus on creating a fabulous morning routine. And if the, and she has to get up earlier, we're going to force her to do that. Now, of course, she still needs to get her sleep. But if you start your day when you feel like you're already behind the eight ball, yeah, that's, that's no why way to start. it's so important to change your mindset about Monday. We do a horrible job yeah. in the workplace, making people excited about Monday. Everybody's like, happy Friday, or, you know, working for the weekend kind of philosophy. But nobody is looking forward to Monday. So I would kind of torture my staff a little bit, make them do a happy Monday. We did a kind of like a happy Monday kind of part of our agenda. And then one of my diehards, oh my gosh, he is still so funny about this to this day. Years later, he, I remember him telling a new employee coming in and he said, now look, I'm just going to warn you. She loves a Monday. She makes us all do this thing, <laughs> but I hate to say it. And then he only told me this when he retired. He never admitted to me when he was working with me. Not he loved for it me. too. Is that he what said, he, I, I hated it. it at first, but yeah, then eventually, I it. oh my gosh. It's like, catchy. Yes. <laughs> Yes. So that is so important. Isn't optimism contagious? It's powerful yes. and contagious. Yes. It's such a positive ripple effect. Yeah. That's how come those negative Nancys, especially if they're in leadership, oh my goodness. Oh, it, it's toxic. They, it is it, toxic. It really is poison in the yes. pool. It is. Yes. I, I have loved this hour. I don't know where we are time-wise, but <laughs> I have so enjoyed it. You are you are so uplifting. You are so empowering and encouraging. Thank and I'm you. sure you're making such a huge impact Thank in you. so many women's lives. So tell everybody where they can find you, how you can help women yes. specifically, or, you know, in, in all the different ways that you're out there. Yes. And, and thank you for that opportunity. Uh, yes, they can find, if they are interested in the book, you can find the book on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Just type in either Dawn Hamby or the Career Woman's Secret Playbook. I got so excited about the book. You know this, your yeah. audience yeah. does. Yeah. You're holding yeah. up so you can show everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got... So I got so excited about the book <laughs> that I uh, started a podcast based on the book. I love that. And so the podcast, you can find that on Apple and Spotify, wherever you listen. And again, it's called The Queer Woman's Secret Playbook. Now, I mentioned uh, the website. I just love, and this is the abundance mindset. Yeah. I love people having access to a bunch of free resources, mm -hmm. right? I'm not sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, if they take this, they're going to copy me or, you know, there's enough work out there for everybody. So I have a bunch of freebies. I wanted to make sure that your audience knew about that. I have a cheat sheet that if they go to uh, www.drdawnshoptalk, that's the name of our company, .com, then uh, for your audience, I wanted to thank them for listening and thank you, of course, for oh. inviting me to be on your podcast. Of course. But they can, get a, they can download a free cheat sheet that includes a free bonus coaching session with me. The cheat sheet is called what to do when your office is driving you nuts. <laughs> and it's strategies, Dominique, you could use 
in every Where were industry you a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so they could they can download that for free, but it's for every industry, and it's great in your personal life too. When the people around you, you're like, oh my gosh, if I have to, I'm going to throw a stapler at somebody in five seconds if they don't leave me alone. Right. So it's strategies on um, not to become homicidal. Right. We want to make sure <laughs> we need to keep the peace. Yeah, we want to keep the peace. Yes, yes. And so um, they can go to the website and download that. And then I also am providing a coupon code. So if they type in over fifty all caps on over, and then the number five zero over 50, they can get 20% off all of our products and services. Oh, that's so cool. Well, I just, I believe in, in us being able to do this for women. I believe if, if they don't have the finances to do that, there's so much free stuff on the website. Mm. They have access to our YouTube channel, by the way. Yep. I have uh, over 90 videos that can help women right now broken down into all those playlists. We've got passion. We've got time management. We have all of that. Right. So that's free as well. They can find us on YouTube at Dr. Dawn Shop Talk is our YouTube handle. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. I have just thoroughly enjoyed having you. I love having women who care to help other women. And Dawn, you are clearly doing that. This Thank is you. a passion project for you. It definitely is a passion project. Yes. And so that's why I want to make sure they can find us, whether it's our website, whether it's LinkedIn, we're on LinkedIn and Facebook as well okay. at Dr. Dawn Shop Talk. So they just need to reach out to us and we'd be happy to help them or just chit chat so we can all just talk about the guys and how sometimes they drive us crazy, but we love them. <laughs> but we love them. A and little we're aside, make sure, but that's Okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, no. We, uh, we well, love thank them. you and your beautiful badass daughter That's for right. taking the time to drive in from Little Rock. Yes, yes. That's pretty yes. special. That means the world to me that you wanted to do that. I'm Absolutely. so grateful that you're here. Absolutely. I could not pass up on the chance to meet you in person now that I've followed you for a couple of years. So thank Aww. you for the honor of letting me talk to your audience today. Loved it. And tell them a little bit more about what we do. It's been just a wonderful experience. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Don. If you are interested in re-entering the workforce or maybe hooking back into those passions and figuring out how to make work really not work anymore and want to take advantage of Don's resources, I hope you do that. All of her information is provided in the description below. Um, also, if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to this channel. You can comment, share your ideas, what you thought about today's episode, what you'd like to see in future episodes. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen, to podcasts. Don't forget the RRSS, rate, review, subscribe, and share. Those things are so important in helping to grow this platform and really to share this type of content with other women in your lives who you think would benefit from this information. Again, I'm here because I believe in the power of sharing and I want to bring on guests who also feel the same, like-minded women just wanting to encourage and support other women. Go out this week and flourish. Have a good one. I'll see you next time. 